Hello and welcome to this session. In this session, we will discuss the statement and proof of Pythagoras theorem and its converse. Now, Pythagoras theorem holds for right angled triangles. Now, a right angled triangle is a triangle which has a right angle that is an angle measuring 90 degrees as one of its angles. Now suppose ABC is a right angle triangle, right angled at B. Now here the side opposite to the right angle is called hypotenuse. And this is the longer side of the triangle and the other two sides are called legs of the triangle. Now when we say a right angle triangle ABC right angled at B, it means the right angle is formed at the vertex B. So here, angle B is 90 degrees, AC is the hypotenuse, and AB and BC are the legs of triangle ABC. Now let us discuss Pythagoras theorem. Now Pythagoras theorem states that in a right angled triangle, sum of squares of length of legs is equal to square of length of hypotenuse. Now if in a right angle triangle length of hypotenuse is C and length of legs are A and B then according to Pythagoras theorem we have square of length of hypotenuse that is C square is equal to sum of squares of length of legs that is a square plus b square. Now see the following right angle triangles. Now in figure 1, length of hypotenuse is c and length of other two sides of this triangle are a and b. Now when this triangle is rotated at an angle of 90 degrees, we get figure 2. And again, when this triangle in figure 2 is rotated at an angle of 90 degrees, then we get figure 3. And lastly, when this triangle, that is the triangle in figure 3, is rotated at an angle of 90 degrees, we get figure 4. Now here you can see that all the four triangles formed are identical or you can say all these triangles are congruent because all corresponding sides and angles of these triangles are equal. Now when we join all these triangles together we get this figure which forms a square. Now here, two squares are formed. The bigger square is formed by the legs of these triangles. So here, its side is of length A plus B. So here, length of each side of this bigger square is A plus B and the smallest square is formed in the center by the hypotenuse of length C. So, each side of inner square is of length C. And now we will start with the proof of Pythagoras theorem. Now here on a square, we draw four congruent right angle triangles. 
that is triangle PED, triangle EQF, triangles FGR and TSG. Then a smaller square DEFG is formed in the center. Now from the figure we can see length of each side of larger square is equal to sum of length of legs of triangle which is equal to A plus B and length of side of small square is equal to length of hypotenuse which is equal to C. Now this larger square is formed by these four triangles and the smaller square so total area of larger square is equal to area of four triangles plus area of smaller square now we know that area of a square is equal to square of its side so this implies area of larger square will be a plus b whole square as length of each side of larger square is a plus b and this is equal to area of four triangles now area of each triangle will be equal to half into base into height so area of four triangles will be four into one by two into a into b the whole plus area of smaller square will be c square as length of each side of smaller square is c and this implies now a plus b whole square is a square plus b square plus 2ab and this is equal to now 2 into 2 is 4 so this will be 2 into a into b which is 2ab plus c square further this implies a square plus b square plus 2ab minus 2ab is equal to c square now plus 2ab will be cancelled with minus 2ab and this implies a square plus b square is equal to c square so here we have proved that in a right angle triangle sum of squares of length of legs is equal to square of length of hypotenuse hence we have proved the Pythagoras theorem now let us see the use of this theorem now let us discuss an example for this now in a right angle triangle when we know length of any two sides then using Pythagoras theorem we can find length of the third side now here in this right angle triangle we have to find the value of x now we know that in a right angle triangle side opposite to the right angle is called the hypotenuse so here 1 meter represents hypotenuse and length of one of its legs is given as root 3 by 2 meters and we have to find the length of other leg now by Pythagoras theorem we know that in a right angle triangle square of the hypotenuse that is square of the length of hypotenuse which will be 1 square is equal to sum of the squares of length of its legs 
which is root 3 by 2 whole square plus x square. Now this implies 1 is equal to 3 by 4 plus x square which implies x square is equal to 1 minus 3 upon 4 which is equal to 4 minus 3 whole upon 4 which is equal to 1 upon 4 and this implies x is equal to square root of 1 upon 4. Now taking positive square root because length cannot be negative. So here x will be equal to 1 upon 2. So here length of this leg is 1 upon 2 meters. Now let us discuss converse of Pythagoras theorem. Now, converse of Pythagoras theorem states that if triangle has sides of length A, B and C and A square plus B square is equal to C square, then this triangle is a right angle triangle. Now let us start with its proof. Now here it is given triangle PQR has sides of length A, B and C that is PQ is equal to A QR is equal to B and PR is equal to C and also it is given that A square plus B square is equal to C square or you can write PQ square plus QR square is equal to PR square and we have to prove that triangle PQR is a right angle triangle. Now for the proof of converse of Pythagoras theorem we shall make use of congruence of two triangles. Now we know that in congruent triangles corresponding parts are equal that is corresponding sides and corresponding angles are equal. Now for the proof we will construct another triangle ABC such that angle B is equal to 90 degrees Side AB is equal to PQ is equal to A. Side BC is equal to QR is equal to B. Now let us start with its proof. Now triangle ABC is a right angle triangle. So in triangle ABC by Pythagoras theorem. AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square. Now, here side AB is equal to PQ and side BC is equal to QR. So this implies AC square is equal to PQ square plus QR square. Now also it is given that PQ square plus QR square is equal to PR square. So this implies AC square is equal to PR square. Now taking positive square root, this implies AC is equal to PR. Now in triangle PQR and triangle ABC, PQ is equal to AB, QR is equal to BC and PR is equal to AC. So by side 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 property
triangle PQR is congruent to triangle ABC. Now we know that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal. So here angle Q will be equal to angle B which is equal to 90 degrees. So here we have proved that angle Q is equal to 90 degrees. Hence we have proved that triangle PQR is a right angle triangle right angled at Q. Now let us see the use of converse. Now suppose we are given any three numbers say 3, 4 and 5. And we have to find whether they form a right angle triangle or not. Then we make use of converse of Pythagoras theorem. Then we check that 3 square plus 4 square is equal to 5 square or not. Now here you have to take the square of the greatest number on one side and the sum of the squares of other two numbers on the other side. Now 5 square is equal to 25 and 3 square plus 4 square is equal to 9 plus 16 which is also 25. So 3 square plus 4 square is equal to 5 square. So, according to the converse of Pythagoras theorem, they form sides of right angle triangle with hypotenuse 5 and such numbers are called Pythagorean triplet. So in this session you have learnt the statement and proof of Pythagoras theorem and its converse. And this completes our session. Hope you all have enjoyed the session.